May I be, may I be heard? Yes, you will be heard, Congressman Marcoleta. But uh, we just acted on the motion. Now, Congresswoman Castro, please, could you please answer the query of Congressman Marcoleta? I have not yet asked the question, Mr. Chair. Okay, please I am continue. trying to explain my point. Please continue, Congressman Marcoleta. Because in the totality of evidence, as stated by Honorable Castro, there is an existing case, Mr. Chair. Hong versus Senate, GR number 257401, which says that the court ruled that the determination of whether a testimony was false or evasive requires an assessment of the totality of evidence presented to determine whether a witness speaks truthfully or merely trying to evade answering the question directly. So I am asking, Mr. Chair, how was the totality of evidence assessed, if ever it was assessed? Ano po yung pinagbatayan? I, I think we deserve to know how the assessment was made. This concerns the liberty of an individual. Under the Constitution, no one should be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. I think Attorney Lopez deserves to be heard. Ano po yung assessment na ginawa ng chair o ng committee? Kasi po, nais, ang, na, ang nabasa ko lang o nakita ko, Mr. Chair, sa, Attorney Lopez wrote the COA explaining the position of the OBP that the audit observation memo is not conclusive. Which means Mr. Chair, Attorney Lopez is merely explaining the nature of an audit observation memo. If I were the lawyer of uh, the OBP, I would have done the same. Because I think the very nature of the AOM, it is not final and executory. Why would, why would the COA abdicate its mandate of auditing the transaction or the funds utilization of the OBP. Why would the committee, Mr. Chair, arrogate, arrogate upon itself the very mandate and responsibility of the Commission on Audit? Article 9D, Section 2, Paragraph 1 of the 1987 Constitution, Mr. Chair, I will read. The Commission on Audit shall have the power, authority, and the duty to examine, audit, and settle all accounts pertaining to the revenue and receipts of and expenditures or uses of funds and property. Mr. Chair, this constitutional provision jibes with Section 25, Paragraph 2 of Presidential Decree 1445 or the State Audit Code of the Philippines, which says to develop and implement a comprehensive audit program that shall encompass an examination of financial transactions, accounts, and reports, including evaluation of compliance with applicable laws and regulations. Meaning to say, Mr. Chair, the mandate and authority to audit accounts on the expenses or expenditures of government is only the COA. I believe, it, it is my respectful submission, Mr. Chair, that this committee usurp that particular mandate and that will now put the Commission on Audit positions in a compromise, Mr. Chair. How, we now, how, how will you now uh, assess the authority the integrity and the, and the mandate, it is an independent constitutional body which mandate rests upon them. And I think the audit observation memo, Mr. Chair, is still under process by the committee, by the Commission on Audit. Why would we take that responsibility from the Commission on Audit? Why don't we allow the process to proceed and complete that investigation? I am raising a constitutional issue before this committee, Mr. Chair. We cannot arrogate upon ourselves 
the principal mandate reposed to the COA. It is the Constitution itself which gave them that responsibility, that authority and mandate. Where, where in Article 7 of the Philippine Constitution, which is the grant of legislative power, can this committee arrogate upon itself that particular mandate? I would like that question to be answered, Mr. Chair.